Hi, I'm Adam, software engineer at Rivet Games, and I'm going to talk to you today about the setup of the 523 in Unreal Engine 4. So this is the interior setup for the 523. As you can see, there's not much in here at the moment, but this is sort of the, the most generic stuff um, and setup that is possible. We've got various little controls, similar to if you saw the 150 video. I've got you know little master keys and all that stuff, but there's no cab model or interior at the moment. It's got some, some door set up, bits for passenger loading and things like that. Um, so this would get something that can be usable very quickly without having to have all of the models and everything set up. Um, and you can see this is sort of just a model that we use on the, on the top. Sometimes I just, like I'll start off with just the generic model that the artists make uh, that's all um, kind of grey, but it'll get updated over time. Then we've got sort of uh, the same kind of thing, but for one of the interior carriages because the 523 is made up of four different carriages two of which are drivable two are not uh, the two that are not drivable are pretty similar to each other and the two that are drivable are very similar so i've got one sort of generic setup for the non-drivable ones and one set up for the drivable ones but again these uh this one's actually got an interior in it although the two interiors are different on the two different drivable carriages and here's sort of the the cab setup which is shared between the two drivables the drivable a and the drivable b then if we look in here this is the most specific um sort of blueprint that i work in this is everything that is totally specific to the drivable a it's got the correct interior in here the cabs the same but and there's very little that is actually different functionality wise but the placement of like the screens um, some of the doors are very, very slightly different, so that functionality would go in here. And if you look at, for example, the B, you can see it's got the different interior with like the first class area. Um, and that's the same for the C, and uh, so the C's got the pantograph on it, and then the D, it's, you know, slightly different model and things. So that's how I go about setting up the, um, the blueprints in Unreal Engine. So I'll briefly cover individually a few interesting animations that we've got on the 523. Just like in Train Simulator, we've got the animating uh, brake indicators on the external part of the train. So if I release the train brake, that'll move up and show that it's released. And then if you apply it again, then it'll go back down. And the other one works based on the handbrake. So if I put the handbrake on, then that'll apply. So we've got these fans on the roof and if you lower the pantograph, so that's the pantograph comes down, then they'll slowly wind down and stop. Um, and then if you raise it again, then they'll come on and they slowly speed up. And it's got audio attached to that as well. So it's pretty cool. So another detail that we've made on the train is with these blinds, for example, there's a little uh, sort of notch that comes along and so as you pull the blinds down, it will follow that curve as it goes along. And so it's like a smooth animation across. There's also like, if you pulled the blind down, you're not gonna be able to open up that window or vice versa. It would not allow you to sort of pull it down um, and end up clipping it through or anything like that. Here's the 523 at Cersei. And I want to show off the numbering that we've got for the 523. So there's lots of areas where we've got to update the numbers. For example, this one's the 523056. The 523 will stay the same because it is a 523. And then the 056 is sort of a specific number um, that you sort of generate for this unit of trains. So if we come down and look over here, this one is also 523056, but it's got a specific number at the end here. And this checksum is calculated through a bit of maths and it should be accurate to what it would be in real life. It does a, there's a mathematical ca calculation that it does with this entire number, the sort of adding numbers together and um, eventually it gets to this point where it knows this one is the dash five. And if we look down here, this one gets the seven. You can see this one, it's a dash one. Mostly it's dependent on this number here, which depends on whether it's the A, B, C or D unit. This is the fu function that calculates the checksum for the for the train numbering. This number here is sort of the initial number that we use and only one digit in it actually changes. 
So the 9-4 is the tractive type of the specific train we're using, 8-5 is the country code, and then the 5-2-3 is sort of the operator and the specific train that it is. So this is the 5-2-3, so that's where that number comes from. But this one here, that depends on whether this is the number for the entire unit or if it's the number for the specific specific carriage. So if it's the A, the B, the C or the D. So it'll be one of those to somewhere between zero and four. It will be zero, one, two, three, or four. And then it uses that number to calculate the checksum. And then it basically the checksum is calculated by going through every one of those numbers and doing a little bit of maths on that. And that will give you a total. And then you get that total, take 10 minus the last digit of that total, and it gives you the checksum. You can find the formula online and check that I've done it right, but I'm pretty sure it's right. Something pretty important for the 523 is the digital displays. We're doing an implementation of ETCS on this route. And so it was quite important to get this screen looking right and actually operatable. The right hand side screen, uh, this screen here and the destination screen are all interactable. You can, for example, change contrast on them. You could up the brightness, turn them off and on. Um, and all of these things are functional. So for example, this is the, the power. And if I lower the pantograph, that will go away. And then if I raise the pantograph back up again, it takes a little bit while the pantograph raises. And then once it touches the wire, you get the power again. Um, and that's the same for, well, in here there's the, the throttle and brake percent, which will go up and down. And there's another speedometer over here as well. For the ETCS, we've had to do a relatively simplified uh, version of it because it is a very complex system. It's something that is quite difficult to do um, in Train Simulator but we've managed to get a pretty work, well working ETCS model. We're going for ETCS level one and level zero. By default, there is no ETCS active and you can use this button here to toggle between the ETCS modes that we have available. Uh, one toggle will take you into the Integra mode, which is using this button here, similar to ZSI on the uh, a Rosa line or a little bit like AWS in the British routes. If you push it again, it'll take you into ETCS level zero. That will monitor your speeds, but doesn't really do any of the sort of fancy stuff that you can do with ETCS level one. If you're in ETCS level one, then it will calculate a brake curve and give you a target speed. Um, so it'll tell you, for example, you need to be at 40 kilometers an hour for the next stop and you're traveling at 140 and it will show you you need to be at least behind this line and that will gradually come down and it will apply brakes for you if you miss that brake curve. So this is the widget blueprint that I'm using for the ETCS display. Uh, you can see kind of everything is set up on this screen. Uh, we've got dimensions of everything from that they use in the actual ETCS screens and the displays uh, on these trains and we've placed everything as they would be in real life. You've got like flashing door icons, these two here for the Integra safety system. This light will come on when your emergency brakes are active, there's a wee clock and things like that. All of this is sort of controllable and movable like I can change where things are placed. Then all of the functionality for this is controlled in this graph area where we've got things like setting up the visibility of the ZS. So this is for the Integra safety system. It will change what it's supposed to show depending on what mode it's in, uh, which is continually updated um, and should integrate with the HUD and the lights so everything syncs up together. We've also got destination screens working. So as with basically every other train, you've got your outside external uh, destination screens uh, that you can change yourself. You can input on this screen if you know the codes for them. You can change the, the destination with that, or you can just toggle through with, for example, using numpad next or previous buttons uh, to change the destination screen. This destination screen will also update internal destination screens that we've set up. 
So you can see that that's changed there. We've set up a little clock in the corner. It'll just follow the time of the game. So you could play without HUD and still know the times that are going on if you want that sort of experience. There's also some small ones here. And it's set up mostly the same way as the uh, this, this screen here as well. It's, but you just feed in different information. So it just gets a message whenever the destination updates. It comes in and it just changes the text. And it's pretty much as simple as that. Set destination as text and it just changes it. For this route, we implemented a version of ETCS, which stands for European Train Control System. And we've got ETCS level zero and level one, as well as a mode that allows you to run it with uh, no ETCS enabled at all. Basically on Luzerne, we had to, in order to calculate the, the upcoming track speed, which is what the ETCS does, you, you, you hit a magnet, it sends a message, and then in reality, what it would do is that magnet would send information uh, to the train to tell it what the next so many speed limits and then distances to those speed limits is going to be. And then ETCS calculates, okay, what is the next lowest one? Let's calculate a brake curve to make sure that you reach that point in time. But because of the way that TSW works, um, we had to try to match up the signal with the change in route speed. And the actual route like any given part of the track. If I go here, that little section along here from that start to the end, that is one bit of track and that bit of track has a speed limit attached to it. So that'll be in, in here. It's got this sort of primary and secondary speed limit. And that is different from what a signal says that the speed limit is. And so in order to calculate the ETCS, we have to match up what this, the, these little ETCS magnets on the track. When you go over one of those, it needs to match up where the signal is with how many of these track segments there are in order to make sure that it brings you down to the right speed at the right time, rather than saying, oh, the next one is at this end point, which it isn't. Like clearly that's, you're not supposed to stop in the middle of this tunnel. You've got to make sure that you, you sort of match everything up. So we've got, We've done quite a lot of work to try and get this to work properly. So all of the bits for ETCS is from the, these little magnet things. There's also like signals, valid releases, I don't, I'm not sure. But there's a, there's a speed limit anyway. And we added in speed limits that are not actually there on the current route because they're not necessary because ETCS it drives can basically handle all of that stuff but we have it on here to allow you to drive it without ETCS. That was a quick overview of the technical setup for the 523. Make sure to watch the previous video where we covered the 3D art. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more content like this.